What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another vintage cube thing. We're doing the cube. Cubing it up. Mark Cuban. I like Urza Saga. I like True Name Nemesis. There's also a Delta and a Strand. Fascinating. It's a lot of options here. I kind of like going with Urza Saga here and just drafting around that thing. And then if Hangerback comes back, we can get it with Urza Saga. True Name is also good. Urza Saga doesn't commit us to anything, though. All right, let's go with Urza Saga. What do we got here? Sir Ginger, Meal Ender. Gingy! I like Cryptic Command with an Urza Saga. I like being the mono blue deck. However, there is a Chrome Host Seed Shark and a Displacer Kitten, which are going to push people into blue. Maybe. Cryptic Command's better than both of those, though. Also, a Zealous Conscripts we can take. Archfiend of the Dross. I, is this just an aggressive creature in here? Like, usually you play this with Mephitic, uh, Metamorphic, what is that card called? Metamorphic Alteration. <clears throat> yeah, Metamorphic Alteration, it, it enters the... Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature, and then that creature is a copy of this. So then it says whenever, um, if, his, if this has no oil counters on it, you lose the game. So basically you just make one of their creatures a copy of Archfiend. It has no oil counters and then they lose. But without Mephitic, me Metamorphic Alteration, it just doesn't seem like it makes as much sense. I took Cryptic. I was going to take Luris at the last second, but then I was like, the heart wants what the heart wants, you know? Now I'm easily taking this Force of Negation. And if Mind Slaver or Prismari Command comes back, that would be great. But I'm pretty much okay with the Force of Negation. Okay, well, all dry. <clears throat> could just be black here. Uh, we could also take Arid Mesa, which keeps us open for both white, blue, and red, blue. Yeah, it's got to be Arid Mesa. Nothing in here is that compelling. I like Grave Titan, obviously, and I like Ravenous Chupacabra, but... There's no Urza Saga <clears throat> interactions, and there's no blue cards, so Arid Mesa it is. Now we can get, well, we just passed the Thespian stage, and now we're passing a Dark Depths. However, there's a Miscalc, a Brazen Borrower, and a Hollowed Fountain to get with our Arid Mesa, and there's also a Top to get with our Urza Saga. This pack is actually very good for us. Good gravy. Even, even, even Bank Buster's good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three cards are coming back. So, wow. What could... I mean, is it just going to be Elf, Gargaroth, Stormseeker? I think it's either Brazen Bar or Miscalc. It could be Top, actually. I, I think it's important to have targets for this, and Top is pretty good. Oh, God, I really... I'm not a Top fan. I don't like the card. I don't like... Having to keep activating it. I don't like putting cards back all the time. I think the mechanics of it are not fun for me. The time it takes is not enjoyable. But what are you going to do? Um, Might and Weakstone and Mere Battlesphere are both very interesting. We also have no other color commitments other than blue right now. We can also take Bolus' Citadel if we hit a Tinker. That could be fascinating. I don't think triple... I just... Again, like, I'm the kind of player that doesn't like having this in my deck if I can't cast it, because it's always going to end up in my hand. I think we'll just take Mightstone, Weakstone. That seems fun. Oh, a Treachery? All right. Great. Easy pick. Uh, Deceiver Exarch is interesting. We also saw Zealous Conscripts going around. It's the one card we can play and probably the one card we even care about here, so I'll just take a Deceiver Exarch. Stern Scolding. Okay. Also, Xander's Lounge, which we can get with Arid Mesa, and it is a blue land. That's interesting. Also, Hangerback Walker. Yeah, I'm just going to take Stern Scolding here.
what was pack one pick one pack one pick one was urza saga i believe and then we took a cryptic command after that and then we took a force of negation and then it just kept going, you know? Thank you. Oh, MTG Pyro. Totally normal. Totally normal five gifted subs. <laughs> I appreciate you, buddy. That's actually funny because most of those people are usually subbed. I know Thank a drunk Tiger Nate and JTHD are usually subbed at some point. So really appreciate you, buddy. Is there, am I still connected? Are we good? Thank you. I have dropped zero frames. So I had to hit the goal. <laughs> well, I've been live for about four minutes. So, you know. We were really cutting it close there, I think, but I do appreciate you taking care of it so early. Ehep is right. Hi, everybody. I <laughs> can't risk it. <laughs> oh, and that's Zealous Conscripts came back. That's what we were looking for. All right. Well, now we have Deceiver and Zealous, so we are open for some 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 twin shenanigans here but for now you can go over there all right and some red cards metamorphos maybe i don't care about grim or voltar and epicure really eh, i don't care about metamorphos either really though i'll just take grim lava mancer uh sure we'll take Eh, yeah, take bone shards. Okay, so Elder Gargroth, Fire Covenant, and Reckless Stormseeker. I said Gargroth, Llanowar Elf, and Stormseeker, so I was off by one. Berto. <laughs> calling, calling Roberto Berto is just funny to me. All right, those last picks were terrible. Bunch of cards I will likely not be playing. That's unfortunate. But, you know, fingers crossed. That uh, gets a little better. There is a bobble, which I don't usually care about. Also a sacred foundry, which you can get with Arab Mesa. It's not super exciting. Day this pack's pretty rough. Days. Teferi is good. We have an Arab Mesa. Um, hello? <laughs> Who is this? Oh, man. Birdo always makes me think of a bird. I think Teferi's the best card in this pack. I don't care about Bobble. I don't feel like we're bobbling. We don't necessarily have to be red yet, so I think I'm just going to take the Teferi here. Keep my fingers crossed. This is a show and tell, but we don't have anything showy or telly yet. Walking Ballista is pretty good with Urza Saga. Yeah, I think we're just taking Ballista here. If we end up getting some mana, some artifact mana, it could be good. I do like a Spell Pierce. If Spell Pierce comes back, I'd be not, I'd be okay with that. Saga King. Oh, because it's is it is it one or uh, zero or one? Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a good, that's a good, I always forget that. And I actually, I actually tried to clarify this distinction online. Cause I was like, but doesn't this have a mana value of zero? And they're like, yes, but it's mana cost, not mana value. And I'm like, this is very, this is all very, very specific. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this walking bliss anyway. Cause I still think it's good. Uh, even if you can't search it out, that pack was not super impressive and see then we get a pack like this where it's like subtlety time warp fairy mastermind odawara <sighs> where i think it's probably just subtlety yeah i think it's subtlety over time warp these two are both fine but i think these two are probably where i'm leaning towards also fast bond but i don't feel like we're a fast bond deck here i do like a mind stone Also a Spire Bluff Canal, if we did want to play the Zealous Conscripts. Also a Golos, but I don't feel like we have any real way to get paid off by Golos. I kind of just want Mindstone here. I 
Cauldra Complete is interesting, especially again, like this is a card that like in a pack like this where there's nothing super compelling. I'll take a Cauldra Complete and hedge on getting Stoneforge because people don't take Stoneforge that high, that highly. Like Get Lost is good. Watery Grave is fine, but like we can't get it with Aaron Mesa and we have no no reason to take it. We're not a Crucible deck, so I think I'm just I, I actually don't like City that much. Oh, Ledger Shredder is great. I do like a Ledger Shredder. Also a Steam Vents. But again, like I'd rather take a playable blue card than a, a blue-red land that we're not necessarily playing. Also an Atali, which is sweet, but Ledger Shredder is just real good. Talisman of Progress. That actually helps with both Teferi and our Stoneforge that we're going to pick up. So that's good. I think this guy is sweet. I read this guy the other day, and... Uh, I mean, I read it on stream, so you know, I already told you guys what it does, but Samwise is interesting. I don't think it's a wedding announcement. We're definitely not a wedding announcement deck. Could just be Wrath of God. Yeah, all right, I'll take a Wrath. Misha's Bobble came back. That you can get. Could also be Winter Orb, and we can just hope for a, a an Urza. Hmm. Because honestly, I just don't care about Mishra's Bobble. Sure, I'll take I'll take Winter Orb. I don't love a Winter Orb. I don't think it's great for what we have right now, but this guy can go anywhere. He can go two, he can go four, he can go six. Cyborg, you also said Saga can't get Balsta. I, I don't know what a Balsta is, but I, I'm assuming that it also can't get Walking Ballista. Oh, Parallax Wave is fascinating. Okay, I'll take a Parallax Wave just for the heck, just for the, just for the fun of it, you know. Wow, both of the two blue cards that we wanted came back. Time Warp did not come back, but both of these guys did. I think we're just taking Mastermind here. I kind of feel like there's a lot of drawing in this in this iteration of the cube that maybe Mastermind's good in. And I say that because my opponent drew a bunch of cards against me. I was typing quickly so the message would get through before you took it and didn't have time. To... You know what? That's good on you. I can't criticize your your spelling when you did it for my benefit, you know? You were just looking out for me, so. Who am I to chastise that? What kind of monster would I be to criticize a man's spelling when he's trying to save lives? So yeah, the only white card I'm super compelled to play right now is Tefri, but it's nice having Wrath of God and Parallax Wave on the sideboard. Oh, uh, Wall of Omens. Okay. Oh, wow, that's a late Rafellos. But you know what? I'm not even surprised anymore. People hate the green deck. I love the green deck. Any new footwear in the rotation? Actually, recently I've been wearing... I picked up the... I picked up the Jordan 1 Across the spider Verses, and that's what I've been wearing most recently. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm Googling a picture of them so I can show you guys. Because I'm sure some people don't know what those look like. Oh, a Jet Mears Garden. Oh, Plateau and a library. I don't know if this guy is any good at all. Draw a card. It's five mana. Five mana is a lot for a Planeswalker in the cube, you know? Okay, hold on. We're, we're getting them. It's these guys. They have a lot of different textures and patterns on them in the reds. 
like you go from suede to leather to like a patent leather. Um, and the reason is because it's the across the spider verse one. So it's trying to represent all of the, the different Spider-Man in the multiverse. So it's a really, really cool interpretation of the Jordan one. Um, I kind of just want Tefri to be honest. Like, I don't know if it's any good. I haven't played him yet, but I did have it played against me and it was pretty sweet. So maybe I'll just take the Tefri. I'll draw cards and I'll make spirits and that'll be the end of it. <laughs> That'll be the end of it. And this pack is terrible. Fantastic. We have a Hero Blade Hold, which is double white. I think we're just taking touch here. I don't even like to see Rex Sucker for not playing Splinter Twin. I don't think we're workshopping. I have Mindstone and Talisman. Like, if you go turn one Mindstone off of Mishra's Workshop, and then you go turn two regular land, on turn two, you still only have two regular mana. So it just doesn't seem great. Elder Scrolls' Legends is available on Steam again? That's interesting. I wonder why. Oh, Mana Drain? A third pick Mana Drain? Don't mind if I do. Let's take out Deceiver Exarch for now so we're not like... And this pack is absolutely horrendous. Oh, actually, Season Dungeon is just great. That's just a solid gentleman. Lady? Gentle lady? Madam? Ma'am? Yeah, that's a great card. Oh, and a Fractured Identity. And also a Splinter Twin, but we are far from red. I would love... I would love some form of dual land here. I don't think I can take... I, it might be correct, but I don't know if I can personally take a Vista over a Fractured Identity. So I'm not going to. Yeah, this pack's kind of meh. I also hope Vista comes back. There was a Kiki in that pack. I actually didn't even I didn't even notice. I had Fractured Identity Tunnel Vision. Wow, Emrakul and Through the Breach in the same pack. That is something. I think we're just taking Consider here. Oh, Volcanic Island is actually great for us, even though I do want this Palace Jailer. Um, because we can get it with Arid Mesa, which makes Arid Mesa dual land. Also, someone's getting a Pestermite. God, I wish we, I wish we could have taken that Palace Jailer. It's also a double white, and I'm not... Like, we have five white cards. Four white cards. So I'm not really super... I would have loved if... Um, Stoneforge came back. Yeah, I can't take a Palace Jailer when I don't have a single dual land, though. Like, when we're looking at, like, double blue, double blue, triple blue, double blue, double blue. Like, it's just... I kind of just want to make sure we can cast our spells. Casting spell is a bit overrated, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it might be. It might be. I mean, I do like the the, the combination of cards we have here. Two, two mana rocks to go from two to four, which is a nice little spot for us. Ugh. <sighs> I usually play magic with little cool spells in my hand and then never be able to cast them. Man, the mail starts coming later and later during the holiday season. It's like 4.50 and I'm like, where's the mail? It usually gets here at like 1 or 2. What's the, what's the, what's the hold up here? Am I disconnected? I have to keep asking if I'm disconnected because come on, man. Where is the mail? I don't want you to be in the chat anymore. You have to leave. Where are the turtles? Is everything okay? Do I need to call do I need to call a doctor for Magic Online? For my Oh, 
Oh, there we go. We did it. Hey, Lotus Petal. That's interesting. Also a Plateau. And a Sneak Attack. Man, someone's getting the good Sneak Attack and the good Splinter Twin deck. And a Spell Queller, which I don't really care about that much, but... I did pass a Heliod. Again, it was for a Volcanic Island, I think. Or Fractured Identity. It was one of the good cards that I just literally... It might just be Lotus Petal. We can get it with Urza Saga. I don't think it... Like, Plateau doesn't do anything for us. We can already get a Plains with the Arid Mesa, and we can already get a Volcanic Island. I'll just take Emberth Shield Breaker. Oh, a Soul Herder. Hey, Kikijiki came back. Soul Herder doesn't really have a ton of targets. I think we're just hating this Kikijiki to make someone else worse. We can blink Subtlety, but that doesn't do much. We can blink Season Dungeoneer. Don't care about Mother of Runes. Sarah Paragon is double gr double white, so it's not really what we. Wow, Splinter Twin too. Huh. That's interesting. So we just got Kiki Jiki and Splinter Twin, and we already have Deceiver Exarch and Zealous Conscripts. You're giving me a lot to consider here. Well, considering there's no more picks, it's hard to say if Arresto has... And we got this Restless Bivouac last pick. That's pretty good. We could also put the Jetmere's Garden in here to get with Arid Mesa as another... as a plateau. Interesting. I'm tempted to cut Urza Saga now. Because obviously colored mana is going to be at a premium here. Fascinating. Cut that, cut that. This is 22, this would be 23. Oh, real bunny corn is out. Uh, oh, Deceiver Exarch is in. Okay, interesting. This is 23, and I think this is actually pretty interesting. I don't know if I'll have Cryptic here, especially with Kiki Jiki, but... We have no creatures with Manavelli 1 or less other than Esper and Grim Lavamancer. Hmm. Everything else seems good, though, right? Like... Plus we have top. <sighs> cryptic seems rough. Could just play Embreath Shieldbreaker instead of Cryptic, which is like our second pick. Like we're not playing our first or second picks, which is kind of funny. But that's just not how it worked out, you know? Like Shieldbreaker is just a solid... A solid card. Still only single white cards, which is nice. They're still there for you. <laughs> oh, I do appreciate it. I am tempted to play Ranger Captain and Esper Sentinel here. It's like one too many five mana cards. I think this is probably fine. Which library did I pass? Mm -hmm. 
So seven, eight, nine. I took five minutes effort over Library of Alexandria. I mean, like, I don't think Library is good in this deck. I don't even think it's that great in general. Uh, three, four, five, six. Actually, this is actually an interesting mana configuration. This is seven. This is nine blue. Three, four, five, six, seven red. Probably go up to eight. And then one, two, three, four, five white. That actually seems pretty good. I'm actually impressed with the amount of colors that we have here. All right, let's see if this does anything. I mean, I think Sylvan Library is better than Library of Alexandria for just ranking libraries. I'm far more uh, likely to play a Sylvan Library. All libraries are good and important. You know what? I don't disagree with you. I think having libraries in a society is very important. I do think also starting a round is important as well, so let's do that. Wow, that was a... That was prophetic. Oh, this is a this is a good one. Double blue, double red. Ramp into Teferi, and then into Teferi. I understand. Interesting choice. Um, I do kind of like getting Jetmere's Garden here with this. Sealed until the end step. Because now we have triple red for Kiki and we also have double blue, so it's pretty good. Let's, let's go. Triple blue. Just kidding. So the one thing I don't like is if you use Teferi to bounce the, the golem, you actually just lose Teferi. And if you plus one Teferi, then it just goes to one. I don't think that's worth it. Especially if Deceiver XR can just block the Blade Splicer all day. Yeah, it's happening when you're red. I'll take an extra three just to eat the the blade splicer. Sure. Should have tapped the white. Oh, they're just getting rid of it immediately. That's fascinating. Oh, that would have been good. <laughs> that's, oh, that's what father likes. Anyway, we're going to go one, two, three. Play this guy. Oh, that was nice. Because if they had exiled their own guy, we wouldn't have been able to draw the card. So they kind of just gave us a free card there. I think this would have been a better mana usage, but I think getting Teferi down when they have no... Oh, they have one card in hand? Oh, wow. So it's just only a matter of time before this, this pops off. Yeah. If we make a 2-2, two -two, they just exile it? I think it's fine to draw a card here. Always yield to that. Play land, right? Can't also play our Wall of Omens. Uh, 
That one's pretty good. But they also already have GTA. What else could they have? Banner Skull? There it is. Yep. Okay, so they have one. Okay, they're just going to play Batter Skull. Great success. Yeah, we can just touch the Spear Realm on that guy. So. I'm just going to plus that guy. Start with a wall of omens. Treachery. Okay. Okay. Well, I think we're going to steal something. Then they're going to exile it, though, huh? That's pretty bad for us. I mean, we're definitely playing Touch the Spirit Realm here, right? No, they have to get two hits off of GTA for it to be irrelevant at all here. So we plus... Oh, we haven't drawn a card yet. I should have drawn a card first, I guess. I'm just going to make a guy here because they actually have to get rid of it in order to uh, save their stone forge. Yes, dear. Are you asking me something? What's going on? Yeah. Okay. Are you having fun? I think I'm. I'm think. I think I'm having a fun time. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm doing good. Yep. This is fine. We just block. They get two counters, but they can't kill a Deceiver Exarch with two counters. And Deceiver Exarch comes in on their next turn, so we get to tap uh, their Stone Forge, so that they can't actually use it. Shua Garner, have you sent me my chips yet? Because I feel like they should have gotten here from Utah in the past three weeks. So. <laughs> uh. Draw. We can also just bounce their guy as well. I'm going to draw again. Oh, wow, they were two months ago. Why didn't you tell me that? I'm like sitting here waiting for the... Ch I'm like, oh, cool, he's going to send me these chips. It's going to be awesome. And I'm like, man, they're still not here. Oh, boy. Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. So this is going to leave. We get our Deceiver Exarch back. They can't play spells at instant speed. So that's kind of cool. I think we just want to... No, I, I definitely want to keep this guy up. Hey, man, I've been busy. <laughs> when did... Is that a Mike B response? Is that what he says? Uh, It's not even worth stealing this because they can, like, kill it with their NGT and then we just lose our guy. I think we're just a fine passing here. And hoping, like, they, they have, like, two cards to draw removal. They have the card they drew last turn, and then they have whatever they draw this turn. Tap this guy. Uh, that's fine. You can only cast Blade Splicer. Sure. Oh yeah, that's you're dead. <laughs> and that's the game. They're like fingers crossed, and I'm like, your fingers don't matter here. Leave them somewhere else. Let's go to the main phase. Kapow. Time keeps on twinning, twinning, twinning. 
Breath does seem pretty decent against them. Glad we put the Embreath Shield Breaker in. That guy's pretty decent. I also kind of like Might Mightstone and Weakstone. Neg 5, Neg 5 is decent. Teferi was pretty good there. I mean, is it better than 5 mana blue white Teferi? I don't think so. I do think Wrath can come in. I think we can cut a blue for a planes here because of that Wrath. Uh, this is, wait, this is 41. Oh, we didn't cut anything for the Wrath. Yes, correct. Smart. Fucking wicked smart. Uh, Fairy Mastermind, they don't seem like they're drawing any cards. I don't think Sentinel, like what, they played like two spells, right? They played like Urza's, uh, Umizabas Jete and Parallax Wave, right? So, like all their cards are creatures. I don't, I don't think it's going to be drawing us a ton of cards here. I mean, plus they can just put those into play off of Stoneforge as well, so. Might Stone and Weak Stone. Oh yeah, Mox, but like, they're probably not gonna... Like, our, our odds of having a, a plane, an untapped planes on turn one, which we have three of, uh, into Esper Sentinel, into them taking their turn, and then playing Mox, they can just go land, Mox, tap the land. Like, it, it, it's very unlikely you're gonna get them, but you're probably just actually mentioning that they played it, not that we could get them, so. Yeah, this actually seems fine. I wonder if they took out... Parallax wave. Yeah, this hand seems great. The hand's got the win in it. How can it be bad, you know? I want to play Volcanic Island because we want as many red sources as possible, and depending on our draw sequence, I don't want to... Fascinating. Turn two mocks. I mean, that's the correct way to do it, but you didn't do that game one. Hmm. Awkward. Put it into the graveyard. Ah, that's good. I want a white source. I just want to... I want a mana rock here. Can we do that? No? Sounds good. See, like, this is what I mean. Like, I want to ma make sure we can hit three red by whatever turn we need it. Yeah, I guess we're taking four. No bites on the one... Well, I had two people offer me... I, I had someone offer me 1700 and then someone say, I'm interested at 1600 and I was like, wow, $700 off. I would be interested in that as well. So yeah, I'm trying to sell a copy of Amazing Spider-Man 129 8.5 CGC. And, uh... Boy, a lot of four drops here when we have, like, seven two drops in the deck. What did they get? Sounds good. Alright. Would love, would love for one of these to be a three drop. Any one of them. Yes, if we can top deck Wrath of God, I'm good. We did not. Um, I mean, Dungeoneer seems pretty good here, though. Does it, though? Or do we just keep up Subtlety? Subtlety being kept up does not seem great. They're going to put Batter Skull into play. They're going to get the initiative. That seems fine. Are they going to reprieve me? Don't reprieve me, bro. Wow. Well, at least we get a land. You know, for all the good it does. Yep, they get a batter skull. So we're taking four, five, six, seven, eight to nine damage, depending on what they have. It's not looking good for our heroes. 
And that'll do it. All right. Oh, my God. Come on, dude. Come on. That's hilarious. I mean, look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thirteen things to do before turn four. Sometimes it's a fluke, you know? And 513, still no mail. Yeah, I, I definitely see the con I, I definitely know the the uh the consignment accounts on Instagram. Like elite comics and stuff. Like I'm very familiar with those guys. Uh this seems very good. The pro I think the, the problem is I just don't want to spend, I, like, I don't want to pay the extra 5%. I, it's actually 5% on top of, so, like, PayPal Goods and Services is, like, is like 3% fee, but then if you, if you consign with them, like, there's a, it's a fee-free payment. They use friends and family because they can be trusted, and they take 5%, so it's only 2% more, actually. I'm just going to play this to keep up Stern Scolding, and we also want to play Mana Drain on 2 to play Teferi into Jetmir's Garden. This this could be good. It's true. I am playing top. Yep, that's fine. Hopefully you play something off of it. Beautiful. It's beautiful. It's true. The The mox is actually surprisingly good for them. Good for us. Because if they play a three drop, then we can go Teferi into mana, into uh, Jetmir's Garden. Oh, God. This is just the best. So now we get, pl we get Planeswalker on turn three into tapped land which is just phenomenal I think we actually just make a guy here because it's a 4-4 four, four next turn 4-4 four, four with vigilance is pretty good when they have no, no pressure on the board hmm that's good mine is better though So, yield to both of these. Okay. So, we're probably not going to make a second guy here. Let's draw and see what happens. Oh, we're definitely probably playing that. Definitely probably. That is fascinating. I mean, we could kill the mocks, but like they haven't missed a land drop yet. So there's no there's no real indication that they're I, I would think I would rather just have this guy out I think we're just getting third red here play to land activated this guy this is a wizard this is a spirit oh man it's not a wizard That seems fine. Yep, this is a, this is a nice... A nice uh, suite of creatures that you have here. Um, so what is it? Scry 2 or... 
two two counters, huh? Yep. It's not exactly what we wanted there. But we do want to steal probably Giver of Runes, I think. Is one card... Is one card better than another 2-2? Two, two? Probably not. So we're going to go Face and Wandering Emperor... Pro creatures. And we get to explore. What's the revealed card? Kiki Jiki? Mm, no, I'll keep that. That's got to do something good, right? Yeah, all right. That's pretty good. Okay, they did nothing really exciting. What do they get? Jitte or Batter Skull? B Skull? All right, I feel like we're probably in, I feel like we're probably in good shape here. I don't actually even know what Arena does. Go to Creature? No, we're definitely trapping them. Yep, look at all these triggers just from drawing cards, just from doing what what magic wants you to do, you know? Oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's all happening. Um, well? I mean, do we just win here if we steal something? They have one card, it's Batter Skull. Yeah, all right, let's just steal something. Okay, that'll do. <laughs> This Tepri came in clutch, man. Not too, not too shabby. Not too shabby. All right, welcome back to round dose. Oh, this is a keeper turn two Leggy Shredder. We got a uh, lots of good action. Otherwise, yeah, definitely keep. What Doritos are they? They're like spicy pineapple Doritos. They sound amazing. It's really weird that food items to me have become collectibles. Like, I just want to try this, these Doritos and eat them. Spicy pineapple jalapeno. But, like, they're not available anywhere. Like, I went to Walmart the other day to get food. And one of the, like, you know how they have, like, the stands that have the chips on them? It's like, this was a Doritos stand. And on the side, it literally said spicy pineapple jalapeno. It was like the, that was the bag that they had on the side. And I was like, oh, maybe they have them. And it was just a bunch of normal Doritos. They just had a bunch of normal ass Doritos on there. And I was like, why would you use this as your advertising if you don't even have that particular chip? User reviews 2.3. That, that's weird that there's user reviews on a specific type of Doritos. But here we are. Welcome to 2023. Uh, what kind of lunatic okayed this? I'm a sucker for trying new things. Most of the time, it's a pleasant experience. This was not one of those times. I came to work and my coworker, who was kind of the slow one mentally, had a bag of these monstrosities. I was skeptical 
And for the love of God, I don't know why I didn't listen to my instincts. I tried one and it tasted like the bottom of a toilet bowl after someone ate a pineapple jalapeno pizza and deuced one out. The smell alone was off-putting, but the taste was a thing of nightmares. My tongue was burning from the heat, but the rest of the experience was no less than a constant fight against my gag reflex. Whoever thought this was a good good flavor should be forced to clean the urinals at the local Indian food restaurant with their tongue for the next 299 years. Shame on you. Well, that's something. Well, this is awkward. I can't subtlety that. So I guess we're just going to get... Okay. That's a bummer. They do smell like fresh cut grass or a little like gasoline. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what a what a range. Uh, I can't tell it's either gas or grass. Like the it's like the old saying when you were hitchhiking. You know, like back in the 60s and 70s and people would hitchhike that have to provide gas or grass. Well, I think we just lost the game. Yep, that'll do it. Sounds good. Man, flash on turn two is pretty good. Oh, boy. What are you doing, Stern Scolding? What are you doing? Could it be Parallax Wave? Just gets rid of their tokens. Wrath does too. But Wrath kills our creatures as well. I'm not sure if Wrath is just better. Like, it really depends on what they have. We've seen one creature from them, which is going to make three tokens, and Parallax Wave gets rid of all of them. Whereas Wrath, if we have, like, Deceiver X Ark or Ledger Shredder out, like, then we're just killing our own guys. Ass Gas or Grass, that's what it was. you got to add the ass, too. That is definitely a form of currency, I, I, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know. I do... I mm, I don't think any of these cards are super compelling. Actually, Esper Sentinel is pretty sweet to get with Urza Saga. That just occurred to me. I think it's because, like, adding another one, one mana white card and a colorless land to the deck is just not kind of where you want to be. So... Oh, this is actually good. We can get Volcanic Island here. See, this is why the Iron Man, this is why that Volcanic Island was a freaking master masterpiece of a pick. So we can get Volk and consider on turn one, and then we can actually mana drain and hopefully have something to use the mana for. They mulligan to six, and I guess they're thinking of mulliganing further, and they de they decided not to. They were like, you know what? That's not for me. Mm -hmm. See, I would love to get Jetmere's Garden so we have a white, but I don't think I have the luxury of doing that when we don't have double blue. So I th think I do want to consider here. I'm going to bin this. Yeah, good choice. Smart. Pro plays. That... Oh, that's that's decent if we can get a white source, but I was hoping for that uh, five-mana Teferi again. 
manager in a two drop then five minutes effort would be nice what could it be chrome mox i was like oh they're paying two to cast a chrome mox fascinating I mean, now I'm definitely more incentivized to to counter whatever this is, but interesting. Do I care about that? Not really. That was weird. What's going on? I'll tap my Chrome Mox and untap it before the Blood Trigger enters the battlefield. Mm, that's decent, but I really wish it was a blue source because I don't really want to take down the shields. You know what I'm saying? It also doesn't add white. If this was a talisman, I, I'd be so much more, so much more excited about it. All right, we're just gonna pass here. Keep up force and Mandarin. Stop. Oh my god, they're just rubbing his face on this box. It's driving me insane. Stop. <laughs> Crying out loud, man. It's just like every every five seconds it's like <laughs> Can Saga get sent? Oh now who doesn't know? Urza's Saga. Search your library for an artifact card of mana cost zero or one, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. As per Sentinel's an artifact that costs one, is it not? Does it have to be one colorless mana? Oh, for example, you couldn't find a card of mana cost blue or mana cost X. I think Urza Saga's third ability is actually fairly confusing because I think it's very easy to conflate mana cost which is the actual new, like the actual number that's printed on the card with mana value. So no, you cannot get Esper Sentinel. Apparently I just don't know how any of the nuance of Aversa Saga works. And that's, that's fine, I guess. It's just, there's, there's very few cards that actually care about mana cost rather than mana value, I think. Oh, that was a good draw. Y'all ever Kiki Jiki a Splinter uh, Wall of Omens? Get a bunch of little walls. They have four cards. Are they cracking that B token? That juicy B token? <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have laughed at that. But here we are. Grief. <laughs> oh, you sweet summer child. Well, you know what? Sure. You can take one of the two counter spells in my hand. I mean, what's the alternative? We kill we counter this and then we can't counter the next thing. They're probably just gonna take fractured because they can't get through the counter spells, maybe? I don't know. Who can say? Yeah, that's what I figured. So what did they exile? They also exiled Fatal Push? Sure. So now they have two cards. We know one of them is likely... That's fine. We know one of them is likely a reanimate spell. That they're just going to avoid. Yeah, we're definitely drawing with Mind Stone. That's why I left it up.
Mm, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to block. Bold strategy. Lightning bolt. I mean, honestly, they have two more mana, and every every reanimate spell costs this much, so I can't do both. That's unfortunate. We know their last card is some sort of reanimate nonsense, though, so. Oh, that's really good. Fudge. One, two, three, four. So we can just keep mana drain up and, like, walking ballista. Shoot this guy. That seemed good. I love putting a, a walking ballista token into play with Kiki Jiki. Hmm. Fascinating. Okay. Well... I don't think we're going to block here. Flash, huh? So wait, your last card is a spell and not a removal spell? Like, and I, This is interesting. Where does this leave us? The problem is if they do have something, like it could just be a bluff to bait a counter spell out of our hand. But I like, I think we have to respect the bluff. Yes, thank you. Well aware. <laughs> uh, so this leaves us with no mana drain up though. Interesting. I'm uh oh it's not it's not it's mm, this is this is annoying though I really wonder if they this is this is interesting because they know we're gonna only have one blue up yeah actually that's that's the play Yeah, I hated to use Managerine on Flash, but... Yeah. No. <laughs> That's not a chance. And we exile that, which is nice, because it has escape, so... Okay, well, <laughs> that's, just, uh, that's something. You like that we didn't attack first? Me too. Me too. Pro plays there. I think I was just so excited about finally getting this guy off the board when he's dealt us like 12 damage. Yeah. So if they if we if we lose with them at two, then totally on us. But uh let's one, two, three. Yeah, I'm actually going to save this and just keep up a bluff. We can just still do it on their turn if we really need to. 
Yeah, they could be at nine right now. I mean, I like, wait, how do we throw away a free plus one plus one? What am I missing? Like, Oh, we could have we could have activated this and attacked and then get, gotten the plus one plus one that way. Yeah, that's that's true. Corpse dance, but you're only getting back this guy. Stop. This is why I have to shut my door when I stream. It's like just pets going in and out, like rubbing their faces on cardboard boxes, and it's just like... <laughs> like nonstop. Um, sure. Yeah, I think we have to kill this guy, otherwise... Like, I just don't want to take another three and go to four. One, two, three. I'm just going to activate it now. Yeah, because like we're putting them to, to six and we've missed three points. We've missed the two from this guy and the extra one that we could have dealt last turn without bluffing. So they'd be at three and we could probably could just kill them with walking ballista this turn if we had, if we had. So we, we're giving them an extra turn here, but... Yeah, I feel like it's... Oh, great. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, well, that's it. There you go. Yep. Wonderful. What can you do? I wonder how long they had the Italian hand. Yeah, the two points of life mattered, and the like. I was like, "Oh, I'll keep four mana back so I can bluff something," but like, we also hit a bunch of lands and like Splinter Twin and Kiki Jiki in hand with none of the other two components. So, you know, I definitely made a, my my share of mistakes. My draws were not great. So, could we have won that game? Very likely. I mean, I did not think the the one one point of damage was going to make that much of a difference. But that's magic, man. Life points matter. They add up. Yeah, definitely keep this. Jetmere's Garden into Wall of Omens, into Deceiver Exarch. And I'm sure the top two draws are going to be like Mountain Splinter Twins, so I think we're good. But this is a really hot guy. God damn. Uh, playing Kiki as a 2-2 Haster might have been worth it, but I mean, you're getting the same, like, I mean, maybe... I think I was playing a little too conservative, to be fair. I think I was just giving them more time than they needed. And that's just, I think that's just sometimes how I play. Like, it's its hard to...
There's an embereth. What an embereth of fresh air. Well, that's fascinating. Don't know what to do about that guy. Well, I guess we're spinning the wheel here. Just attack. Smart. Smart. I hope they got some shitty creatures in their deck, too. Top card, huh? Seems good. What did you hit for me? Seasoned Dungeoneer, huh? And Snuff Out. Wonderful. Wonderful. You are casting this. Is that worth... Is it worth subtletying to my own deck? Maybe. Like, what are we going to hit? Kiki Jiki, maybe? Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, they already took our Seasoned Engineer and our Wall of Omens, Embereth, Shieldbreaker, and Subtlety are here. I think our odds are actually. It's going to. It's it's like Zealous Conscript, Kiki Jiki, Fairy Mastermind. They also still have seven cards in hand. So, you know. Hold on one second. All right. Search for your land. My God. Yeah, because I think our deck only has like nine creatures, seven to nine creatures, and this is one, two, three, four, five. So now it's Mastermind Conscripts, Kiki Jiki. I'm trying to think of what other creatures we might have. I don't think we have other two drops. And that was just their, wow, that was just their upkeep. That wasn't even their turn. I mean, well, Tali's the top card of your deck, I guess, you know. What can you do? Oh, my Popeye's chicken has arrived. Is that the first thing Super Princess said in the chat? No, he said sometimes you got to get your face in there. Okay. Oh, he's been chatting. Why? Well, I haven't seen Super Prince even say anything yet. That's interesting. This is fine. That means they're tapped out. All right, fingers crossed. Tap this guy. Not sure it does anything, but also the snuff out is in the graveyard, so that's nice. He is sliding below the radar today. That's true. Choose target opponent who controls more creatures. This guy. One time. Come on. I deserve it. Where is it? I don't. What? Oh, yes, I haven't yes yet. Okay. Zealous Conscripts. And there's a Splinter Twin. That's unfortunate. What are we stealing here? If we steal a land, we can fracture identity of Tali. That seems better, right? Oh, 
there's your boy. Oh, even if we took the red source, we still wouldn't have had the mana. That's unfortunate. Wow. If we didn't draw this, we could have atollied into it. That's sad. Oh my God. And we had, we had two red. So close. I mean, it's still here. We still only have one red though. For casting purposes. I too have an Atali. Oh, there's Fairy Mastermind. Actually, Mox Diamond's pretty decent here. And now we can do one of these jobbies, kill this guy. So now we have two red, which is not terrible. And they can't immediately kill something with Doretti. We don't really have great attacks, unfortunately. But the game is definitely afoot. I thought the game was a jar. You'd be incorrect. You sound like a fool. Oh, Archon of Cruelty. Fantastic. Well, it doesn't get haste, I guess, so that's something. And you got a corpse dance in your graveyard, but no creatures, so that's good. I guess we'll get rid of Fairy Mastermind. No, you're going to draw cards off that guy. We are, rather. Yeah, we could have attacked with both and just lost one of them to get the initiative back. I think we just want to ship Deceiver Exarch, probably. This guy's not attacking this turn. I have so many cards, though, dude. I'm going to get rid of Zealous Conscripts, actually, instead. And we're going to have to discard Subtlety, unfortunately. Okay, well, we get to draw an extra card. It's not a, it's not a red source. Papa needs a red source. I always, it's always funny because I'm like, wow, that's what they did this turn. They, they cast Archon of Cruelty and put it into play. And I'm like, oh wait, that was just the upkeep and they still get to, they still get to do other stuff with their mana and their eight cards in hand. My mistake. I kept Deceiver Exarch because it has four toughness. That's probably just better against red decks. I don't think it's going to matter because they have a lot of, a lot of cards. Man, treacheries in the graveyard too. That's sad. We hit Treachery, Splinter Twin, Mana Drain, and a bunch of lands. Not a lot of red lands, though. Looks like Island, Island, Island. Mm, sure. They discarded Ashen Rider. Now they're going to reanimate it, I bet. Kill our Deceiver Exarch. If they reanimate, like, it's just over. Okay, if they play any spell that reanimates now... They did not. Okay. There it is. <laughs> All right. Well, you got to go for it, right? Give him the old college try. Yep. Never don't have it. And after this, we're just done, so... 
YouTube is not going much better. Still don't have any more than 12.4K subs. Literally cannot pass that threshold no matter what. So uh, we cannot Kiki the Itali. It is a legendary creature. So fantastic. No, you can't. Create a token that's a copy of target non-legendary creature. You like literally cannot do it. It is in the it is in the Atali, it is in the Kiki Jiki rolls. I don't think we have anything that's good against Oath, except for them like just not drawing Oath. I mean, Wrath of God is fine. We also saw Corpse Dance. I mean, if we sack... <laughs> yeah, I know you're just trolling, but like if we sack uh, Atali instead and then we have Zealous and Deceiver Exarch, then we, we activate Kiki Jiki once and then they kill it in response. So there's no real way around it as long as they have the exact removal that they need. I mean, they also hit Atali right off the top of the deck. I mean, I don't know if it's better than... Actually, I mean, if, if they hit Archon of Cruelty, we, like, sack and discard, and then, like, we get to play an Archon of Cruelty off of our... I don't know. I don't think any of these cards are really great against this this matchup. Parallax Wave is interesting because it temporarily gets rid of guys, and if they steal our guys with Atali, then we get them back. It's just not... But then, again, like, if they were trying to kill... Deceiver Exarch, we could exile our creatures in response, but then like it still takes like 10 turns and they have Archon of It's like, it's a whole thing. Wow. The combo, but not a single red card. I'm going to mulligan this hand. Mm, this seems significantly better, actually. I'll keep this. Pitch a mountain and we are done. It's a nice turn to consider into turn three season Dungeoneer. So, you know, fingers crossed. Oh. Fascinating. Well, I was hoping we would be able to dodge a collective brutality by casting consider in response. But now we drew a manager in, so it's worse. But that's okay. We still... Still, still considering it, you know? Uh, I do not think I want a Mind Stone here. I do like an Arid Mesa to get a Volcanic Island. That's really good. Now I'm actually just curious if I just play... If I just keep managing up against them. I don't think so. But maybe? No, that doesn't feel correct. This also gets us a land. We have three blue. I'd rather get... We have three red as well. They're going to Vampiric? Sure, that's fine. Like, I feel like getting something on the board's better, but I'm pretty sure they're just going to grab Oath. So we got one, two, three, and then we have one, two, three. We're just going to get an island here. All right. Wow. Did not see that coming. They missed the land drop, too.
Uh, what is it? The forge? Yeah, we're forging. Three, four. So we have five mana. We can keep up mana drain. Like, I think we actually just play Ballista for two in case they have Archon come down. And then we have something to sacrifice. <laughs> this actually doesn't do much, interestingly. And they might be dead before they can actually annihilate us. So this is five. Oh, man. This is interesting. Zealous Conscripts, Fractured Identity. We have a bunch of different draws that we can hit here. Restless Bivouac. One, two, three. We're one damage away from actually killing them. That is sad. What is this you're doing? Dark Ritual. Are they snuffing out? Snuff out might actually kill them. Oh. Yep, I think that wins us the game. <laughs> That's, oh no, because this is only two mana, not four mana. So, oh, uh, if this is a, wow. But you still took four, which is just the same as taking five almost? I don't know, man. This is very interesting. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And we can just go like one, two. Put a counter on it. We have one, two, three, four, five, six mana. If we lose four, we still have two left. Yeah, that was pretty good. Interesting. So I have two mana. And we presumably get to... We have a lot of... We have actually a shocking number of haste creatures coming out, so... Fingers crossed, I guess. <laughs> Gotta sack four perms. I guess we'll keep those. Actually, this is just better than Jetmere's Garden at this point. Give Papa his give Papa his zealous conscripts. Daddy wants his conscripts, you see. Yep. Come on. Give me give me that give me that moment. Choose an opponent. I will choose my opponent. Yes. There it is. There's your boy. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what father likes. Oh, man. Give it to me. Beautiful. Oath of Druids. Totally, totally good card. I took it out of my cube because it's just too hard to get to work. Like, it's so much management. Like, you have to manage the card after you play it. Like, if you're, like you're going to make, you're going to get a big creature and then you're going to attack your opponent. If it's Archon, now your opponent's sacrificing their creature. If it's Ulamog, now they're sacrificing their permanence. And then they're going to get a trigger off of it. You know, it's like, it's a lot of managing. Yeah, I, I think there's a difference between micromanaging and using your brain. Like, I, I don't think it's that fun, to be honest with you. I, it also it also really inhibits deck building in a weird way. Like, I, I can only play, like, three creatures. They all have to be really good. I kind of just want Cryptic in here, but it's kind of slow. How many creatures do we have? Ten? What was I missing last time? Ledger Shredder and Embrace Shieldbreaker. I forgot about those guys. Um, I got pretty much everything else, I guess. Do you want Esper Sentinel? Remember when I was like, we can get, we can get Walking Bliss and Esper Sentinel with Urza Saga? No. I don't know. Like, getting rid of an Ulamog for, like, two turns just doesn't feel great. Plus, if you're getting rid of their guys and you have a creature, then they just get to trigger Oath again. I don't know. Embreath Shieldbreaker might be worse than Esper Sentinel here. What? Oh, they cast, like, infinite spells. They had Terra Sunder, Snuff Out, Oath... Oh, just because it gives us a guy? Yeah, but, like, we're not going to not play our creatures because of that. Like, that's like saying, creatures are terrible against an Oath deck. Yeah, sure. But, I mean, like, if I can draw more cards and put more bodies on the board, like... I mean, I'm taking out Embrace Shieldbreaker, which also doesn't do much, so... Yeah, Sarah's Emissary is cute, but, like, if I draw it, it's just terrible. Well, this hand is three white cards in uh, Mountain Mountain Island, huh? Seems good. Seems good. I mean, they've had Oath and or Vampiric Tutor two out of three games, so let's see if they can keep their streak alive. They went to six. We have a top. I'm keeping it because of top. I want, I want that to be known. They went to five. They're going deep on the play. Okay. And if we can hit like a Jetmere's Garden or something, that's a white source I can get behind. So next turn we can actually go Talisman into Esper Sentinel. That's pretty cool. I'm also very tempted to not play a creature. That does seem like a... Actually, if they play Oath, we can just bounce Oath with, with Teferi. And then the turn after that, we have Fractured Identity Mana. I don't hate that. And if they want to kill this guy, it's totally fine. Collective Brutality to discard and pitch to get rid of Esper Sentinel and Fracture Identity would be a bummer. And that's exactly what they're going to do. No? Duretti. Spaghetti. Free card. I do like that. I do like Teferi Bounce the Construct. 
Maybe we consider first and see what we hit. I don't want to top into consider because I want to play Teferi this turn. Like, um, yeah, I'll actually keep that. I was just, I, the only reason I wouldn't play Teferi is if I draw a counterspell and I'm not going to risk like seeing two extra cards and just not playing Teferi. Fascinating. That was some fine chicken. Oh, they didn't play anything else. And that's, that's a bingo. Okay, so we just have to survive this turn and then we get to Deceiver X, Ark, and Splinter Twin. That's pretty good. That could be, in the words of Christoph Waltz and Inglorious Bastards, that's a bingo. And they can't play things at sorcery speed. Instant speed? Instant speed is what we're looking for there. Mm, that's fine. Okay, once we go to the end step, the game's over, right? Because that's how Teferi and, and Deceiver Exarch work. It's your boy! Going to get some Deceiver Exarch stuff. That doesn't do anything, but... I, yeah, I'm not even going to top here, like, because they just can't cast anything, so... And... Dos Un. Man, I'm glad we just lucked into a Splinter Twin. That was pretty sweet. Can't really argue with that. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. Help me grow the channel. I would really appreciate it if you guys would click the button. It's down over there. Subscribe. It costs you nothing. It's a great way to help out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.